Let's get the view now from the International Rugby Board. Joined by the Scotland, former Scotland flanker John Jeffrey, who is a member of the IRB Council. And pertinently for us tonight, he's a member of the IRB's Scrum Steering Group. Good evening to you, John. Good evening, Ella. Good Th- evening, Brian and Phil. Good evening. Good evening. Um, thanks so much for talking to us, John. Uh, your, your view, first of all, on the current state of the Scrum, particularly in the international game, I think everyone recognises there's a problem. Yes, I think absolutely everybody does, and you're quite right, Elmer. It's the the T1, the international level, is the worst. But uh, as Brian quite correctly said earlier on, and uh, I hate to disappoint him, but I agree with most of what he was saying earlier on, which from the other side is quite good, and it means that we're all going in the right direction because the scrum is a blight on our game at the moment, but uh, we from the IRB have been working on it for a while. Now, everybody will say that this is too slow, but we're doing it firstly from a player welfare perspective process because as has been mentioned that the the impact is colossal nowadays and how on earth has not been a more serious accident at tier one level i have no idea the the impact uh, i know brian was quoting stats earlier on but the impact now is twice the level it was when we played 20 odd years ago and that is just unacceptable so uh, three years ago they asked bath university of bath to work on a project and that's when the scrum steering group was set up how they could measure the impacts. And we're getting to the end of that trial now. Hopefully, the end of that will come in two weeks' time when they've been uh, measuring the forces of the impact. And we will then go, hopefully, depending how the results from the Pacific Rugby Championship, which we'll talk about in a minute, with the new engagement process, uh, we'll move forward to a global trial that will hopefully sort it out. But I couldn't agree more that it has to be sorted. And just tell us about what you're trialling at the moment in the Pacific Cup. Now, that's the A teams of um, Fiji, Tonga and Samoa. What what have you done? That's them playing against the A team franchises in Australia and New Zealand. Right, OK. So what we're doing is we're going for what is a a passive hit or a passive uh, engagement. I apologise for using the word hit. That should be taken out. It's a passive engagement. It's going to be crouch and binds and then they will not release the bind like they're doing at the moment and they will just basically fold in so the impact will be out the scrum will be square once they bind initially that bind should be there it should be kept so it should be a scrable a stable square scrum and then the ball will be put in brian i think you want to have right, a chat well, with two John. points about that uh, yes it will lessen it initially however there is also this possibility and i'm sure phil will concur on this, if you let props get hold of each other as they're going down, um, although they're not supposed to pull each other up and down as they are uh, in the process of it, I'm willing to believe at some point they will. However, the other point is this, whilst it will lessen the initial impact because you're not going down from as far, the the essential point, and this has to be realised, otherwise all this is a waste of time, is if you allow the front rows to push immediately they come together, you will get the problem lessened for a while, they will find a way to build the power back up again. The most essential part is the rule that is actually still on the book. And if they don't understand that, they won't get it right. These things will work partially. All you need to do is make sure that goes in, in combination with no early shove, square and stationary, and a straight putting. If you get that, it will work. It won't work unless they're there. And I want something, you know, I want... John, do you, do you accept that that's the causation? That that Ryan, has to I couldn't well? agree more. I would love that to be, and that's what we're intending, taking it through. Absolutely. So you're going, to tell, you're going to tell the referees on this passive engagement they are also to, re, to enforce the law strictly as they're written? That is the intention of what we're doing. Brian, what's going to happen is the Scrum Steering Group... Can, will put can a I ask a question, John? Yes, sorry, Phil, yeah. What, what, why, why are they not refereeing the laws now in the game? Well, I've spoken to uh, most of the Tier 1 coaches in the last six months, and believe it or not, none of them want a straight put-in, which amazed me. Cause I, Since when, I when did on, they make the laws? Yeah, but I came on that I'd be... I was determined, I'm like yourself, I want a straight put-in, I want a stable scrum. First Can of I all, I get hit out for player welfare, and then secondly, let's have a contest, because as you rightly said, rugby union is unique in that it is a game for all shapes and sizes. And we, the scrum is integral to that, and we need to keep the scrum regardless. So if we can take the hit out of it, the engagement out of it, get it down the middle, then I genuinely believe that we have a chance of, moving, of solving this problem. I, I don't understand why coaches would not want to have a straight put in at the scrum, because surely that's what makes it a contest. Yeah, because the coaches uh, <laughs> say they want, they want, uh, they they want, want to guarantee the, the feed, mm. you know, which is bizarre. 
The thing is, though, John, is, is, as you well know, players and coaches are infinitely adaptable. And if you make it, the reason they're saying that is because they've, they've been allowed to do it. And, of course, they don't want to change the habits that they've got into because that's where they all go down. However, if they are simply told that is the way it is, they will change and they will change quickly. Yeah. What, what we're looking at doing, Brian, is uh, once the scrum steering group, if they recommend this trial, and I'm not saying they are going to recommend this trial. Remember, this trial is done... Uh, at the level that Ellie was talking about, the A groups, it's not been done at Tier 1, so we've only got results from that at the moment. We'd be taking it forward. We, before it goes to a global trial, it would then go back to every stakeholder, all the stakeholder bodies, to referees, to players, to coaches, to the media as well, so they got buy-in on this concept. But, John, what I don't understand is this. Is the laws are written, they are there... No one has given... Did anyone from the IRB give permission to the referees to stop refereeing these? Are they told that's all right? No, it's been evolved. It's the way the game has evolved, Brian. How, though? It's been uh, just the way, as I say, it's been evolved because they're looking at that much stuff going on in the scrum. They're getting collapsed. So so, so, so I, I, I agree with you, Brian, I, I, 100%. But here's a scenario for you then, John. We, we, we do these trials. Sure. I think it's a, it's a very positive step for the IRB to, to look at this. Uh, uh, f- we need to keep our scrum in the game. So then you're going to go back to the clubs, coaches, to to fans, to media. One says yes, one says no. And at the end of the day, we're at a stalemate. At the end of the day, you, you are the governing body. You yes, but, have to but, make Phil, decisions we need, because we, get, we end we up with a big mother's meeting. Well. Why, why, why can't you just tell them you're in charge? There is, a, there is a positive concept. You look at New Zealand at the moment. New Zealand scrums. They have a 90% success rate. Yeah, because the ball's shoved in the number eight's feet. Yeah, but it's shoved in the front but, of the feet from other countries. But, but also, let, let, let's, get let, 90% success let's look at that a, a little bit more, though, John. Sure. And it could be, because I was thinking about this today, the Southern Hemisphere, Northern Hemisphere. The scrum, I believe, in principle, still in the Southern Hemisphere, is used as a way to restart the game. They still view it as a way to restart the game because they want to play the game. In the Northern Hemisphere, it's edging towards, it's a weapon which can be used to win penalties to win games. Because, you know what, I'm not actually that bothered about playing too much rugby. If I can win a game 12-6 down at Sandy Park last weekend through a scrum, then that's what I'm going to do. Well, you're absolutely spot on with that. The mindset in the Southern Hemisphere is totally different to the one we have in the Northern Hemisphere. And we need to try and change that as well. Now, there is a wee bit of pitches. You mentioned the Saracens pitch already. The first game they played against uh, on Exeter there, the scrum completion rate was 80%. So there is a wee bit to do with pitches. You look at our Six Nations this year, the first round of games were all played on excellent weather conditions, and it was the best rugby, the best scrum results, then get into worse weather, and that's what happens. But it's a mindset. We've got to get buy-in from everybody. And I, as I say, I totally concur with your view on the Southern Hemisphere mindset. What, John, what, what, if, what, if you, uh, what if they all got together at elite level and decided they want to be able to throw the ball not straight at the line out? Would you have to get one for that as well? Or, no, or what I'm saying is we'd like to, buy, much get them to, get, to get a buy-in, Brian, to put the ball down the middle. But, but, but John, it's a law. I, 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 I can't. Appreciate, if, Brian, if, I appreciate it's a law. But it's, it's a law that r- works really well elsewhere. I, I, I simply but don't understand gone, why gone. a governing body can't say you will do this, and if you don't do it, you'll get keep penalised until you do do it. And then well, we'll... that is our intention <laughs> with the new laws that we do that. That it's going to, as I say, when it comes to hopefully global trial in the summer, it will be including. They are penalised if the ball does not go okay, down. That's good. If, if they don't um, decide to go ahead with a, with a trial globally, will you still go ahead with, re, with enforcing the law strictly? There will be a global trial. There has to be a global trial this summer, Brian, no. regardless. Because if we don't have a global trial, we then cannot put it in law because it has to be in okay, law. But even Some if you, laws even have if to you be made a even, year in advance of the World Cup. Understand that. Even if you didn't go through with the new engagement sequence... Why does that have to be linked, or does that have to be linked to enforcing the laws as they are now and, and, and still should be? It's I'd... to be linked in at the same time. Why? Because it makes sense to link it all in at the same time, because it's well, not no, been happening at the they're moment. still there. I, I don't understand. It's not, being, it's not happening at the moment. Well, <laughs> in, the same, in the same way, Brian, <laughs> is that you're not allowed to shove before the ball comes in. Well, that's not being refereed at the moment. Well, do something. well tell, him to, tell him to referee it then. Say, so you will re- say you will referee this. You're in charge of the. You're, you chair the the appointments committee of the referees. You're, 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 you're not. You're not going to get picked if you don't do this. Yeah. Do it now. Well, could well, you do, you could say, do that, couldn't you? It's a uh, it's, it's a concept of the game at the moment. 
that is not been it's not happening. Mm. Well, well, but but John, I mean, I, 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 we all we all I mean, clearly, all three of you are on exactly the same hymn sheet when it comes to being passionate about the game and worried about the the way it's perceived at the moment, particularly after the Six Nations sure. that we've just had. But I mean, one of one of the texts, one of the tweets we've just had um, says um, from BR Stout, why are the IRB waiting for the measurements of the forces in scrums when John Jeffries has just said they're too height, too high and dangerous? As Brian says, you know, why, why can, I, I, if everyone is, if everyone basically agrees, why can things not happen now? I tell you, well, Ellie, first of all, for a trial, you've got to let a trial finish or legally, if we went ahead and made a change until you get the results of these trials, then legally, if somebody got injured. There'd be, there'd be big problems. So you've got to see a trial finish and get the results of it. So that's why we can't do it ad hoc. The way it works is it then goes to global trial. It would start uh, 1st of September in the Northern Hemisphere, 1st of January in the Southern Hemisphere, and hopefully, if it was successful, it would then become law the following year because laws have to be changed at least a year out from a World Cup. So it'd be but, but, you've just, but you've just said there, though, John, and I, 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 and I'm, I, and I know I'm stirring things a little bit because, because Brian, I can feel him having a meltdown next to me here. <laughs> he, we, we talk about the trial and it has, we have to do this, but whether that's welfare or the legal side of it and before it goes into law. Well, the law actually doesn't mean anything anymore, does it? Because we are not following the law today as it stands anyway. So how is that going to change? Because uh, they're going to be told to change it in the summer. That's what's going to happen. So why can't you tell a referee this weekend, uh, Worcester Warriors, when we're scrumming mm-hmm. and they're pushing before the ball and the hooker doesn't hook? Why why can't you ring up whoever's refereeing and say you've got to referee the laws of the game, or else that's it? Just a final final thought on that, on that, John. I mean, I, I think I think that it, you know the, the frustration that that you can feel is that everyone wants it sorted now, and we can understand that, that these things you know don't don't just happen overnight because we're talking about a global game here. But but what is your hope? I mean, what would you like to see at the World Cup when it comes around? You know, when it comes to scrums. On scrums, I would like to see a ninety percent success rate on scrums. Quite simple, and they stay up, and the ball time is not wasted at scrums. You have a contest, both hookers are allowed to hook, try and hook for the ball, uh, it stays up and the ball goes out and it gets out along the back line. Listen, John, thank you so much for coming on and allowing the guys to have a, have a go at you. because Not a um, problem. <laughs> thank you, John. It's, it's thank a you. really good debate. Nice. Um, John Bye. Jeffrey, who is a member of the IRB Council and uh, he's a member of the IRB, uh, IRB's Scrum Steering Group, who I'm sure has had food for thought this evening.